Hi folks, I'm here with two guys on a ride, and today Rob and I are at the Twin Cities Auto Show, uh, and we're here with Jeff, and uh, behind us we have a propane uh, dual-powered uh, right. vehicle that uh, caught our eye, and so we want to stop and talk to Jeff a little bit exactly about how, how this propane works in cars. So, Jeff, tell us where you're from. I'm with a company called LPG and NH3 Supply. We're based in Buffalo, Minnesota. Okay. So... Um, this is, well, a, a, a hybrid of sorts. It's gas and propane. Correct. So does that mean it has two tanks? It does. Yes, it does. Okay. So a gas tank, a propane tank, roughly the same size each tank? Uh, the propane tank on this vehicle is about 21 usable gallons, and the gasoline tank is about 24. Okay. So they're close. All right. So, you know, in, in terms of what we can see in the engine, is there anything really different? Because there's just a switch that you flip to go between them, right? Correct. Um, basically, this is a parallel fuel system. So we don't take anything away. We add to it. Okay. So we add a tank. We add some fuel lines. We add a vaporizer. We add a couple of injector rails. Uh, we add some filters, and we add a control module along with a selector switch that goes inside. Okay, so let's say I bought a car, mm -hmm. and I want to switch it to, to run dual gas and propane. Yep. You guys would do that? We, we would do that. Okay. So, um, in terms of torque and horsepower... Anything that this uh, does on gas, it'll do exactly the same on propane. Okay, you won't so, notice a difference. So, and no difference at all. <laughs> no. Man. All right, so uh, let's say on an average tank of gas, if you filled it up completely, you know, you get about maybe um, about a 350 mile range, mm -hmm. something around there. Um, if you ran just off of the propane, would you get around that same mileage or would it be? You would get about 5 to 10% less fuel economy, but it's about half the price per gallon. So it makes up for it there. All right. So if you put 20 gallons in, the 21 gallons in, you're, you're looking at about $42. Mm -hmm. Right. As 44. opposed to close to 100. Correct. I mean, that that's just, that's incredible. Right there is a huge savings. Let's take a look at the gas tank a minute because when I looked at it the first time, I almost thought it was, you know, just a plastic dummy gas cover. But... Mm -hmm. So this is the uh, propane intake, uh, propane fill yep. valve, and that's the gas one. Correct. All right, so how does a nozzle work? Well, we have a, a newer type nozzle that operates a lot like a gasoline nozzle does today. Okay. Where you would put it on the fill valve, and then you'd squeeze the trigger, and it would fill. And when it, once it got to 80% of fill, it would automatically shut off, and there wouldn't be any spillage or very little emission out of uh, the disconnect. So you mentioned it fills to 80%. Mm -hmm. it, what's the reason for that? For expansion of the fuel as the temperatures it rises. change. Okay. Right. All right. And, and I know you mentioned, you know, that there's, a, a, I think you said about a 5 to 10% or 10% loss. 15. 10 to 15, 15. right? But we know that ethanol does the same thing. Mm -hmm. um, so no matter which fuel you're using, there's loss that occurs. Correct. So that's a pretty standard, yep. pretty standard thing. Okay. And... Um, you know, the, the dynamics are, there's nothing different. Nope. Underneath, we've removed the spare tire and, and we put a toroidal type tank that goes in the same exact space. Okay. So then that, that would be one physical change. Your spare would then have to go somewhere else if you want it in the side or right. somewhere. Most okay. people are using AAA today, so it's not. It's, it's not an issue. Right. right. If I decided I wanted my vehicle to be switched over to being uh, gas and propane, mm -hmm. what kinds of places am I, be, I, am I going to be able to stop and fill up with propane? Well, anybody technically that sells propane can fill a propane vehicle. I mean, propane is propane. Okay. But there are about roughly 3,000 to 4,000 um, auto gas type dispensers coast to coast that are designed and, and placed to fill motor vehicles. Okay, you just have to basically have to have that special nozzle. Well, yes, or an adapter. Or an adapter that will allow you to do that. Correct. Okay. And so, there is an app on your phone that will show you where these different locations are. Okay, which is really nice. So it, it, even in the rural areas, if you live next uh, close to, a, say, an ethanol plant, 
mm -hmm. you very well might be able to, we have to call and check, but that might be a good possibility for a place to, to fill with propane. Correct. Okay. People might be curious, but where does propane come from? Well, it, it comes from, uh, it's either fractionated from natural gas as part of that process. Okay. Or it is uh, a byproduct of the refinement of oil. Okay. Um, there's also a renewable aspect that's coming to market today that will basically make propane carbon neutral. Oh, really? Mm hmm And it's being made out of different types of vegetable oils. And, and uh, it's not widely available right now, but it is. It's being. But it's, uh, coming. it's being used in California right now okay. in certain markets. And as it, it gets more plentiful, it'll it'll find its way outside of that state. Sure, absolutely. Um, when you do a vehicle, when you convert it to hybrid, mm -hmm. is there any type of warranty you, you offer? Yeah. Um, if the vehicle's converted before it has 5,000 miles on it, there's a five-year, 100,000-mile warranty on the system. Okay. And it doesn't impede the warranty of the vehicle. Okay. If it's after that, the vehicle warranty or the system warranty would go down to like three years or... 50 or 60,000 miles. Okay. And roughly, I'm, I'm sure it varies on depending on the vehicle that you do this on. Uh, but if I were a customer and I decided I want to do this, uh, roughly how much of cost, how much is it going to cost me to have this converted to propane? Roughly, you're looking at $9,000 parts and labor. Okay. And fuel, your first fuel up. Okay. And then um, right now, the Minnesota Propane Association has a $5,000 rebate incentive, which basically pays for more than half of the system. Half of that. So if you applied for that, you could basically convert your car to gas uh, or uh, gas and propane for only four grand. Right. And the return on investment of that would be, depend upon how you drive, but right. or how many miles you drive, it could be you know, just a little over a year or it could be a couple or three years. But still, any any ROI that's three years or less is it's typically good. acceptable. It's, it's good. Um, so now the other thing that we haven't mentioned, but since you know vehicles like this that are hybrid have two different sources of fuel mm -hmm. that are used only one at a time, what's the range total? If I'm going to go somewhere and I'm going to flip between gas and propane and run till I'm empty and I'm I'm driving nicely. Yeah. I mean, I think you you've taken a trip. Yep. Recently, okay. So tell us about that. That would be a good example. Uh, I used to have a, a pickup that had 60 gallons of usable propane and 36 gallons of gas. Okay. And between those two, I could go about 1,400 miles, roughly. Today, I've got a, a 24, a 2018 Taurus that has 19 gallons of propane and 19 gallons of gas, and I can go about 900 miles. Wow. I mean, that's just just another aspect. Yeah, you're gonna you're gonna want to stop before that point uh, for, for various uh, reasons. But I mean, that's just kind of crazy. You could drive, you know, a lot. Wow. Well, the you nice part about it is it allows you to find lo less expensive gas places to refuel. It gives you a little more influence on your expenses. Is, yeah. So, Jeff, can I bring in any car to you and have it converted? Not any vehicle. There's a long list of vehicles we can do, okay. but um, it's primarily Fords and General Motors and Rams and Dodge uh, brand vehicles. There's a few other ones, but um, it's mostly those three or four. Okay, and if I'm if I'm a consumer and I'm interested in doing this, I want more information. Where can I go to find more information about your company and, and what you can do? Well, you can go to LPG and NH3.com. Or you can go to the Minnesota Propane Association's website. Um, you can search um, Propane Education Resource Council. Uh, there's a few right there that you can go to. Awesome. Well, you know, Jeff, thank you so much for taking your time. And mm -hmm. to explain this uh, for us and for our audience, we sure appreciate it. Yeah, thank you. Thanks for watching.